In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to Mass this morning as we celebrate the 19th Sunday after Trinity. And a very warm welcome to you if you are tuning in on our social media pages from home. It's good to have you with us today. Let us say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
O God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And so we sit for our readings. A reading from the prophecy of Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground. They hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silence in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honour your father and mother. He said to Jesus, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing, go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, 
There is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields but with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A man took his little son to buy a puppy. When they arrived at the home where the puppies were sold, they walked around to the backyard where they were kept inside a fenced area. There were seven little puppies. As the father and son looked at them, they noticed a puppy whose little tail was wagging crazily, much faster than the tails of all the other puppies. The man then said to the owner of the puppies, we'll take the one with the happy ending. Everybody likes a story with a happy ending. When we look at the personal encounters Jesus had with the people he met, most of them ended brilliantly. More often than not, the people who met Jesus were healed, found salvation, and were eternally changed. But not every meeting ended happily, though. In today's Gospel reading, we find a rich young man whose encounter with Jesus ended unhappily. He was shocked and went away grieving. The rich young man was so right yet so wrong. He came to the right person, asked the right answers, asked the right questions, received the right answers, but made the wrong decision. Despite all he had going for him, he was restless and couldn't find peace. He found that his youth left him unsatisfied. His money left him feeling unfulfilled. His morality, his clean living, and his religious activity had not been able to satisfy the deepest longing of his soul. His swift climb up the rungs of the social ladder had failed to give him what he wanted most, peace with God. He found his way to Jesus, fell down before him and cried out, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He then assured the good teacher that he had kept the commandment since he was a child. Jesus looked steadily at him with love for his uncomplicated integrity, his sheer goodness. But this goodness wasn't enough, and so Jesus challenged him to do one more thing. There is one thing you lack, he said, and here comes the bombshell. Go, sell everything you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Understandably, the young man was unable to do this easily. It wasn't only riches that he would lose, but the comfortable lifestyle that went with it, not to mention his social standing and the respect and admiration of others. And what would he be giving it up for? Jesus takes this opportunity to speak to his disciples about the difficulty of salvation for those who have an abundance of wealth in this world. He said it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. This turned the disciples' understanding on its head. Of course Jesus is not saying that the rich will never enter the kingdom of God nor is he asking everyone to embrace such an absolute poverty. That's a particular and very distinctive vocation to which only a few are called. Nevertheless, in different ways, we are all called to follow Jesus with total commitment. The acquisition of possessions and wealth can so easily dominate our lives. We can come to think that they can provide us with a happiness and security which only God can give. The desire for material prosperity can easily distort our judgment as to what is most important in life, seeking first the kingdom of God. Being preoccupied with wealth 
may blind us to what God is offering us. Only he can give us lasting security, happiness and peace. He wants us to seek nothing but the very best and be content with nothing less. Jesus, the good teacher, asks us to humble ourselves and become free of our worldly goods. He wants us to be unburdened by sins, to pass into the kingdom of heaven. The rich are not excluded from heaven, of course not. They are asked to humble themselves before God and approach him with the right attitude and without all the excess baggage. Travel light on your lifelong journey to the kingdom of heaven. The readings today remind us that amassing wealth will not necessarily lead to security and happiness. It's true that destitution inhibits the growth of human beings and leads to human misery, but excessive wealth can have a similar effect. Eventually, the external treasures begin to contrast with the emptiness of the inner coffers and the need to find something that provides inner value and worth. We should try to rest lightly on our wealth and cultivate an awareness of enough, an attitude of poverty. I have enough to meet my need. I do not yearn for more. It is an attitude which can be liberating, setting us free from a grindstone to begin filling our souls with treasures which will endure to internal life. We can expand our knowledge, reflect on life, explore new horizons, always seeking the gifts of wisdom and understanding. Jesus calls us today to travel light with him and not be held back by unnecessary clutter. If we've learned to travel light on our lifelong journey to the kingdom of heaven, we will find it far easier to follow Christ, who gained the fullness of life and the glory of heaven by being emptied of everything on the cross. There's something liberating in not being weighed down by excess baggage. That's especially true when following Christ. Travel light on your lifelong journey to the kingdom of heaven. Now we're brought face to face with the challenge of Jesus and we have to come up with a response. The question for us is, what are we going to do about it? Shall we change the orientation and tenor of our lives? Or shall we say it's all a bit too risky? Shall we go away like the rich man, grieving, but go away just the same? Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. 
world to come. Amen. And now Tim will lead us in our prayers. So let us pray. <coughs> in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray for the Church throughout the world, today as suggested by the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, for Jonathan Bonaparte Hart, Primate of Liberia, the province of West Africa. And that's today for the people of Liberia, who no poverty, dependence on foreign aid, poor access to vaccines, poor access to rubbish collections. Help us to be with them. We pray also today for the ministry of the Minister and of St Hugh's, for our clergy, Catherine, Jan and Pat, for Bishop Nigel, for our PCC, for Michelle and for Vicky. Lord Jesus, thank you that our churches want to come together and grow. Help us to humbly recognise and have confidence in what we can do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Anglican Cycle of Prayer suggests we pray for those working in journalism. Lord Jesus, who on earth told parables, whose good news we now commune with, please be with those who publish stories giving them compassion and consideration of consequence. Thank you for the many times stories that have been told have stirred up and led to action. Please help reporters and help us to look for the consequence, not just the emotional fix. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. We pray for justice at the gate, the forecourt, the port, the camp. We pray for the wise and fair use of the goods of the earth, for people who can't afford fuel, whether that be in Liberia, China, or Great Britain. We pray for the homeless and we pray for the work of Harbour Place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, recording any known to us. Also for the weary, for the lonely, for those who don't want to be in any trouble. We remember today Barbara, Stephen, Jan, Zoe, Richard, Sarah, Chiara, Chris, Henry, and for those in hospital. We pray for those who have died and for those who mark the loss of those close to them. In conclusion, today a prayer from the Celtic tradition. O God, who broughtest me from the rest of last night unto the joyous light of this day, be thou bringing me from the new light of this day unto the guiding light of eternity. O from the new light of this day, unto the guiding light of eternity. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, 
our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. 
thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, who lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms was on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. same way after supper, he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. As 
our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We drink this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share.
let us pray. Holy and blessed God, you have fed us with the body and blood of your Son and filled us with your Holy Spirit. May we honour you not only with our lips, but in lives dedicated to the service of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Would you please sit for the notices? There aren't many notices this morning actually. Um, you should have everything you need on the notice sheet that you picked up as you came into church. One thing I will um, draw to your attention though is that you will notice that um, Stephen hasn't been dashing backwards and forwards between the small organ and the, the, the major organ at the um, west end of the church today. And the reason for that is, is that uh, there's actually a problem with the, um, the large organ at the moment. Um, it's not very well and I think it's going to need some work doing to it, which is going to be quite costly. So, um, just so you know um, the situation. Um, do stay um, after the service and, um, and join us for a little bit of fellowship over some tea and coffee. It would be lovely to see you. So let's stand for the blessing. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.
church's ministry and mission has never been more needed. Meeting online or in church for prayer services and fellowship, loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity and we are so grateful for all the gifts we receive. This generosity is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. If you are able to give to us now, here's how you can help.